Good morning and welcome to Fothering Hay Castle in Northamptonshire. So here on this really chilly but gloriously sunny day and I'm very lucky to be here today because yesterday I was watching the new Mary Queen of Scots film and so to be able to come here today to Fothering Hay which of course was the site of her execution is quite special. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look around and see what we can see. As you can see there's there's nothing left of the original castle, but there are earthworks. So we're going to take a little tour and see if we can work out where the Great Hall used to be, which of course was the actual place in which Mary was executed. We are now up on what was the um, mot of the castle. Before I show you around, maybe just one or two words about the history. So this is a really ancient site. I think the first buildings here were from around the sort of 11th, 12th century. But of course, Fothering Hay became very well known and, and a, a very important centre in the 15th century. Um, it was, if you like, one of the favoured residences of the Dukes of York. And not only did they build a magnificent castle on this site, but they also built a college, which you can see yonder, part of which remains as the parish church today. But at one point, in its glory, it was a truly magnificent building, almost like an abbey, really, in essence. And of course, Fothering Hay, um, is most well known for its last prisoner, Mary Queen of Scots, who was executed here in 1587, February the 8th, 1587. And so it's quite, quite kind of pertinent to be here now at the end of January, the time of year in which Mary would have been imprisoned here and waiting to hear the fate, uh, her fate really. Um, and so let me just show you around. As I say, we're up here on the the mot of the castle so this is where the big central keep would have been and if I walk you around over in this direction I got my dog with me today so Millie's on tour as usual and um, if you see down there uh, by the gate where those people are that was really one of the main entrance to the castle and there would have been a castle gate and you can see the ditch which was dug all the way around the castle and this area in front of us this plateau this grassland was if you like the bailey of the castle and over on the left hand side were was the chapel and the lodgings which were said to be very fine lodgings and of course this is would have been where mary queen of scots stayed while she was in residence in the castle and then across the bottom there was the site of the great hall and we'll go down there in a minute and stand on the spot that mary was executed and over on that side, just, be just in front of the River Neen here, there would have been the kitchens and the service buildings. And as you can see, we've got this beautiful countryside. The River Neen is meandering its way across the fields, glittering in this morning's light. Really rather a magnificent spot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a little walk down there and let's go and stand where history was made. Okay, so you just heard me talk about the gatehouse. So the main entrance was here. And you can see the ditch on either side. And now what we're doing is we're walking along where the chapel and the privy lodgings once were. So as I was saying, this is where Mary Queen of Scots would have been, um, whoa, there's lots of anthills here, would have been held during her time. And then across the bottom here, we're about to disturb a whole bunch of sheep. We are now entering what was the great hall of Fothering Hay. So I don't know, somewhere around here, literally somewhere around here on this ground would have been the scaffold. And the scaffold was raised up two or three steps covered in black. And of course, Mary very famously went onto the scaffold and her outer garments were removed. And there she was in this scarlet petticoat, the color of martyrdom. Uh, the executioner traditionally asked for her forgiveness, which she gave willingly. And when she knelt, and the axe struck its blow. Unfortunately, her head wasn't clean cut off. It was still connected by a sinew, but it was severed with the second stroke. 
And there ended the sorry, sorry tale of Mary, Queen of Scots. And this is all that's left now of Fothering Hay Castle, this slightly sorry pile of stones. This was once part of the keep. So it was up there, up on the hill, beyond us. And as you can see, Fothering Hay was the birthplace of Richard III. So there's a plaque from the Richard III Society commemorating his birth on the 2nd of October. And over on this side, we have the plaque that commemorates the execution of Mary, Queen of Scots on the 8th of February, 1587. And so as you can see, um, it's a beautiful day here today. The River Neen looks just divine with a pretty, pretty little bridge going over into the village. It's not always such beautiful weather here, but we're lucky today. And I hope when you visit, that you'll experience a day like this and you'll enjoy your visit to Fothering Hay. Having explored the castle site, let's now wander over to the site of the college founded by the House of York in the mid 15th century and see what treasures we can find. So not far from the castle is this beautiful church of St Mary and All Saints in Fothering Hay. And this church was really created as um, a monument, as a celebration um, of the York House of York. Uh, it was largely built in the 15th century and originally it was a collegiate church, which means it was almost like a monastery. And here we have a plan of, this is the church, the parish church today, but once upon a time, the church was much bigger with this choir and lady chapel. And there's a model here that just shows us the church in its, in its glory with the cloisters. And now essentially the church has been cut in half. There's a beautiful ceiling right above me here. Um, this kind of fan vaulted ceiling with the crest of the House of York, which is the falcon and the fetterlock. And that is contemporary and original to the church. And then there's this little bits and pieces so here is the charter this is actually like the contract for the building of the church and it even says down here that if they don't actually finish the work on time then the master mason will find himself in prison perhaps not a bad thing really make sure you get your building work done on time and if we go down the bottom there's some more Yorkist treasures to look at you can already see this lovely painted pulpit. And this pulpit was a gift, apparently, to the church by Edward, the, uh, Edward of York, of course, uh, Edward IV. It's just really fabulous and fascinating to see. And then we have two tombs that are of relevance. The first of the tombs is here. And here we have buried Richard Plantagenet, Duke of York. So this was the father of Richard III and Edward IV and his wife, Cecily Neville. And over on this side, we have the tomb of another Duke of York, we need the second Duke of York. And he was slain in battle at Agincourt. In fact, just been talking to uh, one of the wardens here. And this particular Duke of York was a rather large man. And uh, I certainly read that he got he got crushed in the crush of Agincourt and was smothered to death. But apparently he had this sense that he wasn't going to come back. And so he took some kind of pot with him or cauldron because apparently you couldn't bring a body back from overseas. So what happened was the body would be cut up, boiled up, and then the remains of the bones put in this cauldron and brought back to England. And I presume that's what's buried in there. Ooh, gruesome story. So it's a really historic church. It's literally about two or three minutes walk away from the castle. So if you are visiting the castle of Fotheringhay, make sure you nip down the road and check out the Church of St Mary and All Saints. I hope you've enjoyed this little look around Fothering Hay and being here 
right on the place where history was made. So it's Sarah Morris from the Tudor Travel Guide. Don't forget to catch up with me on social media. You can find me at the Tudor Travel Guide on Facebook or at the TT Guide on Twitter. And of course, the blog site is www.thetudortravelguide.com. I'll see you on the next adventure.